Welcome to the fifth and final day of Fright Fest. Today we're screening A Lonely Place to Die, directed by Julian Gilby. I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you on the flip side. A massive, massive, massive thank you to Film 4 Fright Fest for having us as the closing film of the festival. Would it break your heart if I said I didn't think this was a full horror movie, actually? I nope. think this was a action-adventure thriller with, with, well, as Empire just said, with horror elements. We join a group of climbers and we go climbing um, in the highlands of Scotland. And they unearth a chamber and dig up an eight-year-old girl. Things start to go a little bit wrong. Hurtling further and further out of control as the movie goes on. I should do that with a deep voice, shouldn't I? They were there. Julian has the most fantastic energy. He said, right, you're coming down, we're going to get you climbing. So I learned how to climb down in, uh, in Wales, Snowdonia with him. He threw me in the deep end and I think we, we having that moment to bond together set us up with a good, really good rapport for up in Scotland. Dislodged a rock the size of a small portable TV. And this thing just went bang, 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 went straight through our crew. Uh, and that was, that was a man killer, you know, a little bit to the left or the right. We'd have, we'd have been helicoptering people off the mountain. With movies, we all have escapism. But I think with, with, with Horizon, you can escape that little bit more. Emily Hagins, the director of My Sucky Teen Romance. Geeky kids go to a science fiction convention. There's a lot of people dressed up as vampires, but some of them turn out to be real vampires. One of the kids gets bitten and they have to use their knowledge of pop culture to um, figure out how to turn her back before it's too late. And there's a little bit of romance in there, uh, hence the title. How old are you? 18 years old. How old were you when you made your first film? By the time I finished uh, my first feature, I did the majority of it when I was 12 and finished when I was 13. Have you got a message for young filmmakers? Persevere through all of the challenges because inevitably things will go wrong and not the way you planned. But it's not always wrong, <laughs> necessarily. And if you just embrace that, you'll get some knowledge from the experience and then uh, it might be something you could have never predicted, but it could be the best thing in your film. It's a bit nuts, right? I saw this film on Friday and it's absolutely mental. It's a classic horror storyline. Adolescent Borstal kind of kids, I guess, on a bonding weekend. They're a little bit troubled, they've had difficult upbringings. Pretty bad people, bad, 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 bad grounds, bad grounds, can't even talk. <laughs> Too many beers already. They're doing like community service and they're off out in the first countryside. Basically get terrorised by these inbreds. Lots of blood and guts thrown around. But it starts out really, really like a very British comedy. Even though this is quite grim, I hope that the humour will lighten it. I'm hoping for some laughs and I'm hoping for, you know, some shocked faces and I'm hoping for a little bit of fear with a lot of people. There's no big backstory, there's no big, you know, it's just this crazy sort of, I don't know, murdering movie. <laughs> this post was designed by two friends of mine, Daniel Soldenhof and Chris Burkhardt. They came up with the idea to hire a uh, professional scissor cutter from Switzerland. He usually does um, traditional motifs like when the co cows go down from the Alp. And they gave him the movie to watch. And what he did is he was putting all the scenes of the movie into this little scissor cut things. That's and the, me. That's, that's me. Yeah, and that thing, <laughs> <laughs> hitting her at the chair on the head. Violence, sex, mm. absolutely drunk for an actor, it's a, it's a dream. The original is like that size, uh, and it's uh, cut out on a very, very thin black paper. It's 80 grams paper. And uh, from the original we did um, a photo, not a scan, and that's why you have this three-dimensional effect, because it really bends the paper once, when, when the scissor cut is done. It took him one month to do that. When he makes one mistake, he has to start from the scratch. That's the story of this poster. And if you watch the movie, you can watch the poster and re-watch the movie in the poster. How did you two end up working together? Uh, well, well, we're, we're brothers. brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Drew was like, I have this idea, I just want to make a movie about two buddy zombies. And I was like, well, how about we make it a, a road trip and let's add kind of a weird love story to it too. We chase after her all, all whilst while we're being chased by these crazy bounty hunter dudes, so it's fun. It's yeah, crazy. yeah. <laughs> Huge mix of yeah, genres. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing a yeah. bit of oh. Mad Max in there. Oh, everything, everything, every, every 80s movie. It's inspired by a lot of... 80s action films like Back to the Future and The Goonies. We've had people say that it's like the Ferris Bueller's Day Off of zombie movies. We're just huge fans of the horror comedy genre because we grew up on the set of Evil Dead. Sam Raimi and his whole crew kind of invaded our house. Our dad did the special effects makeup. My grandma is, is the biggest fan of the movie and she only watches John Wayne films and she loves it. <laughs> you almost don't want to break that 
that wall of going into comedy with zombies because zombie fans are so picky about that type of thing. And, you know, we've had some people, they see it and they're like, the zombies talk, I'm not going to watch it. But then they watch it and they really like it. <laughs> we've had a great time this weekend. We really have. I mean, it's gone like a dream. Um, the films have delivered on every level. Every year we have more events and more, basically, content to add to the festival. The Empire is really got a big cinema, it's a different venue. We have two screens now, so it does need much more organising and management. It's growing every year. I'm so pleased that Detention played well for us. It was a gamble to show that movie, but Joseph Kahn was a complete star. I have to say, I did not expect teenage suck sucking romance <laughs> you can't even say what it's called <laughs> my, teen, my sucky teen teenage, teenage romance, romance. To get such a fantastic response. I like the surprises of Fright Fest. I mean, Rabies, so popular that we had to put on another screening. The two directors were just completely, you know, over the moon about that one. Michael Steiner, what a great guy he was too from San Antonio. So many great guests. And the most important thing is the fans. My personal highlight of the weekend has been spending time with the fans. They've been fabulous. The winner of the anti Nyman quiz from hell, uh, Phil Morrison, actually came up to us and while he was thanking us he actually proposed to his girlfriend Zoe in front of us. That's our very first engagement the We've actually got it right this, this year boys I think. It's felt a bit like being a host of a party actually. Yeah. We've done a good job. We're coming to the end and we're just left with the washing mm. up. We hope you've had a bloody good time. Remember to keep checking the website throughout the year for updates. We'll see you next time. Ooh.